In this video series, we focus on the musculoskeletal system starting with amputation of the lower extremity. The diagnosis we will focus on is impaired physical mobility. Here we will learn how to write a care plan. Before we start, check the description below for your free care plan worksheet. This will be useful for writing down rationales provided in this video. Now let's continue with the video. The purpose of a care plan is to document the patient's needs and wants, as well as the nursing interventions, or implementations, planned to meet these needs. As part of the patient's health record, the care plan is used to establish continuity of care. What are the reasons a patient may have impaired physical mobility? The reasons include the following. Musculoskeletal impairments such as a loss of body part. Insufficient muscle strength. Imposed restrictions of movement, including change in center of gravity creating balance problems. Insufficient knowledge of mobility strategies. How can you, the nurse, tell when a patient is experiencing impaired physical mobility? They may have the following. Impaired ability to reposition self in bed. Impaired ability to turn from side to side. Impaired ability to move between sitting and supine positions. Impaired ability to move between long sitting and supine positions. Impaired ability to move between prone and supine positions. What is our goal for the patient? The following are the goals. Patient performs physical activity independently or within limits of amputation. Patient is free of complications of immobility, as evidenced by intact skin, absence of thrombophlebitis, normal bowel pattern, and clear breath sounds. Patient demonstrates use of adaptive techniques that promote ambulation and transferring. Ongoing assessments. The ongoing assessments for impaired physical mobility are Assess the patient's bed positioning and transfer skills. Learning transfer techniques helps re-establish the patient's independence and promotes a feeling of security when moving in bed and ambulating. A patient who had normal mobility before the amputation may find crutch walking or walking with a prosthesis more tiring. The patient may require exercises that strengthen appropriate muscle groups to support ambulation. Assess the patient's nutritional status. Adequate calories and protein are needed for healing and energy for ambulation and transfer techniques. Performing transfer techniques and performing activities with a prosthetic device consume more calories and take a greater physical effort than normal ambulation. Assess the patient's understanding of postoperative activity and the exercise program. Postoperatively, a range of motion exercises will be encouraged in all unaffected extremities. Some patients will begin to ambulate soon after surgery. Other patients will remain non-weight-bearing until the temporary prosthesis is made four to six weeks after surgery. At that time physical therapists will implement a program of functional training with the patient and the prosthesis. Assess the patient's knowledge of ambulating and moving with assistive devices. Patients may already know how to crutch walk, but balance is significantly affected after an amputation. Attention must be paid to developing an awareness of new physical boundaries after the amputation. Determine whether the patient is a candidate for a prosthesis. This decision involves consideration of the type and level of amputation, age and strength of the patient, type of function the patient is attempting to regain, and perhaps most of all the motivation of the patient. Older or debilitated patients may not be able to handle a prosthesis, a wheelchair may be more appropriate. On the other hand, no assumptions should be made about older patients being too old to adapt to a prosthesis. Therapeutic Interventions Now let's go over therapeutic actions of the nurse. Reinforce and teach proper positioning. Patients often develop contractures of the affected extremity, which complicates rehabilitation and the use of a prosthesis. Have the patient lie on his or her back, keeping the pelvis level and the hip joint extended. This positioning prevents flexion or abduction contractures. The patient should avoid the use of pillows under the residual limb. Teach the patient to use a trochanter roll to prevent external rotation. The residual limb will have the tendency to externally rotate the hip on the affected limb. 
Teach the patient to lie prone with the lower extremity in extension for 30 minutes three or four times a day. This activity prevents flexion contracture, especially in the patient who is in a sitting position for long periods of the day. Instruct the patient awaiting a prosthesis regarding the need for a long-term functional training program. It may take several months for the lower extremity to reach a point at which a final device may be fitted. This period allows for the patient to adapt progressively to wearing a prosthesis and to work toward regaining function of the remaining limb. That's it for this video. Check the description below for your free care plan worksheet. This will help you retain information for passing exams.